Those of us who are creative love to find new and different ways to decorate and embellish the things around us. One way that is a whole lot easier than it looks is to use silk ribbon and do embroidery. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsightCrafts.net. So the nice folks at Thread Nanny sent me this lovely assortment of silk ribbons and I used some. I used this one to make a piece of jewelry in a video not too long ago, but today I wanted to focus on the first thing that comes to my mind when I look at silk ribbons is silk ribbon embroidery. Now you, you may have seen silk ribbons in the stores, in the craft stores. They come on cards like this often. I love the fact that the Thread Nanny silk ribbons come on spools because that means you don't have to press them before you use them. If you get them on a card like this, then they've got these creases that you can see. You just heat up your iron, put it flat on your ironing surface, put your ribbon under it and pull it through. And that's all you need to do and it will flatten it. That's actually a great trick for any ribbon that you need to iron. Just keep in mind that acrylic ribbons don't like very much heat and may melt. A silk ribbon will take a higher heat than that. Let's see, these on the cards are all four millimeter. That is the most common width for silk ribbon, but you can also find it in other widths. The Probably the second most common is seven millimeter. If you look it up on Pinterest, you will find a lot of really rich and lush projects like the ones I'm showing on the screen, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can make them quite simple. I just pulled this out of the back of my closet, so it needs some fluffing up. This is a crazy quilt vest that I made and you can see I did a cluster of flowers and if you want to fluff it up, you just hit it with some steam, with a steam iron. There's all different kinds of things you can make from this little vine border, simple flowers, to more complex flowers, adding beads, just simple little borders. Boy, this is grubby. I'm really going to wash this. Actually, I have to take the whole thing apart. That's why it was in the back of my closet. I've lost a lot of weight and it doesn't fit anymore. So I need to take it apart and make it fit. And like a little a little pansy. It's actually a lot simpler than you might think. It's just a few stitches. These roses, I love these spider web roses. All different things. So just with some inspiration. Of course, you don't have to decorate garments if that's not your thing. You could decorate bags, slippers, pin cushions, ornaments, pillows, notebook covers, little boxes, wall hangings. You could make cuff bracelets. You could even do it on paper, although it takes a little planning so you don't make holes in wrong places. Decorate cards. There's so much you can do. You don't need a lot of supplies to do silk ribbon embroidery. Of course, you need something to do it on, and most of the time that's going to be fabric. You want a tightly woven fabric. So this denim is great. It actually looks really cute. I'll show you a project with that. Quilting cottons are perfect. That's what most of those were in that vest I showed you. Any colors you want. I like using these with just kind of a subtle background fabric. You can do it on white. You can do it on any color. Certain designs would really pop on a piece of black. This has a subtle shimmer. This would make a really pretty piece of jewelry. You could even do it on a print like this one. Perhaps embellishing and enhancing things that were already on the printed fabric and make a really cute piece. You just don't want to use a fabric that is loosely woven, like an extreme example would be burlap or something. You need something fairly tightly woven so that you can place your stitches where you want them to be. The next supply you need is a needle and the best needles are chenille needles. What you're looking for in a needle is a large eye, preferably an eye that is wide enough this way so that you can put the ribbon in without it being gathered up. You also want it to have a sharp point because we're going to be piercing that fabric and we often pierce the ribbon. So you want a nice sharp point. You also, it may be a little counterintuitive, but you want one that has kind of a thick shaft. The problem with silk ribbon is that it is delicate and you're pulling it through the fabric a lot as you're stitching. And the more you stitch, the more it gets frayed. 
By having a needle with a thicker shaft, it makes a bigger hole, which abrades the ribbon less. Also, it's helpful to have a tapestry needle as a tool. You can also use an awl, and I'll show you more about that. And perhaps finer needles for embroidery floss. Again, a sharp needle that will go through your fabric. Some of our stitches are enhanced with embroidery floss. What you don't want is a needle with a blunt tip like this one or even the tapestry needle because that will just make things difficult. So specifically chenille needles have that combination that we're looking for. Finally, you need some sort of hoop to put your fabric in. There are a couple different types. There are these types with the screw up here. And then there are these types with a spring ring. These are easy to use, much easier and quicker, but I kind of prefer these because you can tighten down the fabric and get it really, really taut. So how do you make a piece of silk ribbon embroidery into a piece of jewelry? Well, one way of doing that is to use a bezel. Some kind of a metal bezel will give your piece a really nice finished look and you can just fit it in there. This one would be really gorgeous with a piece of embroidery in there because it already has the floral frame. Something like this. I've used these for lots of different projects, including polymer clay. But this would make a pretty piece with a nice composition. Or even something like this. It's intended for jewel gluing in jewels, but you could certainly glue in a piece of embroidery. This one I found, and I think I may use this in an upcoming project, it's a piece of embossed and stamped brass, and this is the front side, but it has a nice deep well and a nice lip on the back side, and I think this would be great to use this as the inside for my a piece of embroidery, and then you'd have a really pretty back side. Something like this that's open, you'd have to make sure and finish the back nicely. This one is cute, but a little shallow. It would be tough to finish that nicely. And this one too would be tough to do the same thing as this. You could, but it would take a lot of care. Uh, even a, a ring like this one is deep enough that you could pop a piece of embroidery in there. Or again, if you finish the back nicely, you could glue it to a piece of filigree. So there are lots of options for making your embroidery into a nice finished piece of jewelry. When you cut yourself a piece of fabric, make sure that you leave plenty of room. It would be a shame to spend all the time and work on making your piece and then limit yourself because you didn't cut a big enough piece of fabric. So don't, don't be stingy with the fabric when you're cutting it. And the way this works, so you just pop that right over like that. Tighten that up so that's nice and tight. Because the ribbon does tend to abrade easily, you don't want to cut long lengths. 12, 18 inches at the very most if you're going to do a lot, but most of the time our stitches are pretty small, so you don't really need that much. And this is how you manage a needle and your silk ribbon. You pop it through your eye because you get a nice long I should be pretty easy. Have you ever done any sewing where the thread slips out of the eye of the needle and it's really annoying to have to keep re-threading it? Here's a cool trick with silk ribbon that you don't have to worry about that problem. So take your short end, poke your needle through maybe a quarter of an inch from the end, slide that all the way down over the eye, and then pull. Pull that all the way up to the eye of the needle. And that is locked on there. And what's nice about this is you can end up using just about every inch of your ribbon. To make a knot on the end, it's almost just as easy. <laughs> Poke your needle through about a quarter of an inch from the end, but then this time poke it up through again so that you're making just a little stitch on the end of your ribbon. Pop that down over the eye. Kind of hold it between your thumb and your finger and pull. And now you have this soft little knot down the bottom. Isn't that cool? 
what I love about silk ribbon embroidery is that you can do just very basic stitches and they look gorgeous because of the ribbon as long as you remember the key which is to keep a very light and loose tension. So the most basic of basic stitches is actually one you can do a lot with. You'd be amazed. Just a straight stitch. Now see how this is all loopy down here? What you want to do once you come up through your fabric is go ahead and grab your, th your ribbon, run it through your fingers all the way down to the needle and straighten it out. Then keep your thumb over that, keeping it flat. And I'm going to take kind of a longish stitch here just to show you. And see how that's nice and flat? And I'm going to keep my thumb in here, or if you don't want to use your thumb, or if you're working in a tight space and you really need control, you can take a tapestry needle or an awl and just guide that to keep it nice and flat. And that's a straight stitch, and you could do a lot with that. I'll show you. Here's a little piece that I made. All it is is a series of beads and four straight stitches, and you have the cutest little dragonfly. I took my heart piece here, traced it on an index card, and cut it out just inside the line, because that's where the piece would end up being on the inside. It made myself a template, and now I can start planning out maybe a little piece that can go in here and be a piece of jewelry. These are just beads. The head is a an 8O. The body is 5 11Os and the tail is 3 15Os. And they're not all exact the exact same color. In fact, you could make the wings two different colors. It was just so tiny. I decided to just do one. Straight stitches. That's it. You know, I have had this embroidery hoop since I was a little kid, I think embroidery was one of the first crafts I did. I remember doing cruel embroidery using this hoop. Remember that denim I told you about? Well, here it is with a couple of cute little bees on it. Those little bees are just two yellow stitches with a black in between and two white stitches with a knot for a head. I like to do colonial knots. It's, you've probably heard of French knots, and you may not have heard of colonial knots, but the colonial knot tends to come out more round and be less flopped over than French knots. And although it looks complicated, once you get it, you won't be able to forget how to do it. Hold your needle in your dominant hand. With your non-dominant hand, hold the thread a couple inches from where it's coming out of the fabric and bring it back so it's making a loop. Stick your needle into that loop. So the part closest to you is going under the needle. The part furthest from you is going over the needle. Just kind of pull that. Bring that ribbon back over the needle up towards the tip and around under it. What you've done, although it's hard to see with the silk ribbon, is you've made a figure eight. Poke your needle down close to where you came up and to get a nice even round knot Pull this up. Don't pull hard. Just pull this up a little snug. Pull that, and you've got a little knot. Super simple. Once you get practice, you can make those in no time. I'll show you one more time. It's easiest if you do it, if you watch this video with a, a piece of floss or thread or ribbon in your hand. Make a loop. Go over and then under the loop with the needle and then go over and under the needle with the thread, with the, the ribbon. Poke down really close, but not quite in the same hole. Now this one, notice I let it loosen up before I pulled it through, so let's see what we get here. See, it's not quite so round and even. So you can choose how you want your knot to be, if you want it to be tighter, or if you want it to be looser. In fact, here's one, I'll deliberately leave it really loose. Swoop over. So you can get all kinds of effects with this. Now let me show you the importance of good tension. You shouldn't do what I'm doing here, which is skip over sections. That's, this is just for demonstration. Like on my little bees, 
you can see how the stitches billow out from point to point where I went in because of course the hole is narrower than the ribbon is wide. The only reason this ribbon is allowed to stay in this shape is because I didn't pull it too tight when I pulled it through. So remember, straighten it out, hold it with your thumb or with a needle, and pull and let it flatten. And now you've got this really pretty shape. Well, look what happens if you pull tight. Well, it doesn't look like much of anything except I mean, you could do that with thread or embroidery floss. If you do that by mistake, just come back in with your awl or your needle, loosen it up, and then pull it again and leave the tension loose. So huge difference. I'll show you that side by side. And that really is the key to getting your, your embroidery to look nice, is just controlling the ribbon. Now I'm going to hold this with my thumb so that I don't yank on this one when I pull on this one. What a difference! Another stitch that you can do that's very similar and really depends on having the proper tension. It's called the ribbon stitch. When you come up, you lay the ribbon flat on the fabric and then pierce the ribbon where you want the stitch to end. and then pull nice and slow and gentle at this point because what you want to do is leave that little bit there. Isn't that pretty? That's the way a lot of flower petals are done just by doing several of these. You can see that you can just add a cluster of knots in the middle and suddenly you've got a really pretty flower. To finish your embroidery is pretty simple. We're not expecting these items to get hard use or wear. So you don't have to be building up piles of knots. What I like to do is pierce one of the stitches in the back or find a couple stitches that I can go under. This one is convenient and I'm going to just hold that on the front and the back with my thumb so that I don't wreck any of the stitches that are on the front side. If you make a mistake and you want to pull out your ribbon, Go ahead and just trim that from the needle. No, you're not wasting much at all because of the way we attached it to the needle. I wasn't happy with the way that turned out, so I'm just going to pull that stitch out. And actually the, the ribbon stitch is probably one you don't want to pop through on the other side because it's kind of a tough one to fix. If you've wrecked it, it's because it's so easy to pull that little last bit through. I can remember when I learned embroidery as a girl, I was told that you should always try to make the back look as nice as the front. So what I'll, I'll do here is just go through and find a couple of these to weave through. And I may, uh, you don't even need to do that much. I think I'll just pierce this one. Again, support it with your finger so that you're not pulling that tight. And maybe one more. Try not to leave ends of your ribbon dangling off, especially with light colored fabrics where they may show through on the front. And for that same reason, you don't really want to travel. If you're working on one area and you need to go over here, cut it, knot it, start afresh on the new section so that you don't have colors showing through on the right side. It definitely ruins the look. So once you've done that a couple times, you can just trim that off and finish it. Those are the basics of how to do silk ribbon embroidery. Next time I will have a few more pieces for you for inspiration and I'll show you how to do some of the basic stitches. So thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed my videos, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Take a look at my Patreon page for how you can support these tutorials and get bonus ones for yourself. If you're interested in the supplies I used, click on the link in the upper right or in the description box to go to my blog post where I always have links to supplies. Happy creating. Bye-bye.